Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to a uh, panel discussion we're having today regarding SunGrow. Um, joined here today by Gary Estreisen, who is the sales manager for renewable sector, and Jacques Olifir, who heads up uh, our SunGrow division inside Heralds. Um, welcome, guys. And, um, Thank you. Thanks for joining us for uh, today to, to have this discussion. Um, I think, uh, Jacques, maybe just coming in, um, load shedding seems to be a thing of the past. I believe it is a, a thing of the past. Um, so I don't think load shedding uh, is the main reason to get solar. It was always the driver for most people in the residential space and, and some commercial spaces. But uh, looking at solar in general, whether it's grid side, um, hybrid, uh, the main thing about solar is cost saving. Mm. So cost saving and then also to have rel reliable power in, in weaker grids. Um, so the inverter will cleanse the power, if I can put it like that. Okay, so, um, so we all know that, that, I mean, adding solar panels and that's where the majority of the generation comes from. Um, so the sun is the free source of energy and hence the solar panel saves you on electricity. But how does a battery save, save on energy? So you can either charge the battery with the solar power, use then it during use it, the night time. Use it night time, yeah. Yes. Or in CNI applications, when it's off-peak tariffs, you can charge your battery via the off-peak tariff. So like arbitrage. Arbitrage, mm. yes. And then discharge in peak tariff. Okay. So, I mean, with Sangro Solutions being aimed at backup and energy independence, um, isn't that sort of like one of the main reasons why people are not looking at it? So the fact that there is no load shedding, you know, that can be that is definitely a driver. But I think mostly in the residential space, not in in CNI. So CNI, it's uh, about the investment you're making, the mm. money you're saving, and then also having reliable power in in cases of maintenance than. Um, by the municipalities or in cases where the municipalities don't have um, reliable power. So, Harry, I mean, let, let's just have a chat about, um, we've seen all of these clever people make these parity um, comparisons. In the last two years, what has happened with the cost of solar equipment? Well, I mean, if you look at, uh, there was a time where we actually paid three times the amount of solar panel today. Um, a lithium price is almost half the price now that we paid a year or two ago. And I think the tendency to even go lower on the lithium pricing. I think we hit the, the lowest of the margin on the panels. I think panels is only on, it will only get more expensive from now and I don't see it going so basically on panels we at the bottom lithium we still see we a still little bit of it coming down. coming down inverter pricing is a little bit more competitive um so it brings us back to the r9 discussion mm. the return on investment currently is massive <coughs> um, i mean we're seeing on some of the projects we design now back to like three years now currently mm. we i mean we were I mean, Greta systems for CNI was like four or five years. Um, home battery systems were like ten nine, years, yeah. ten years. I mean, now we're back at like three, four for residential. Yeah, it's, it's great. Yes. I mean, with the current prices of electricity nowadays, I mean, mm. you can easily justify it. Um, mm. I mean, I mean, that's the other part of the question is you're looking at at the prices of solar equipment is just coming down. Yeah. I mean, two years ago, uh, regular residential installation would have been north of 250, 300,000. Now we're seeing them, you know, some of them even below 100,000. Yeah. Um, which means that, you know, the cost is really coming down. Um, then we have the prices of energy that keeps on going up every year and double digit increases that we are seeing. So our eyes are getting better. When it comes to the reduction in cost, is there a 
like a, a, I would say a price point or a level where you would say, hang on, now we are diving into it's too cheap and the risk of poor quality starts diving in? Um, I think at this stage we actually uh, we, we actually want to be. Um, technology is at the highest point. Um, we're getting massive bang for buck. Mm. Um, good warranties, um, good technology that actually helps us to make more energy decisions. And mm. I think there is the chip in the market and that will always be there. And I think that's where it comes when you make the decisions, you need to make proper decisions. So you actually have the return of your investment and know that you have a bankable warranty at the end of the day. Okay, so with the, with the technology being what it is, I mean, the advice would be look at tier one brands. Yeah. Because tier one brands are now the same price as what cheap, you know, was a low ago. quality product was a year ago. But the cheap, low quality product also keeps on coming down. So, yes, there's going to be those bargains out there. But the, the I think the main thing is, is you had this two year warranty type products and the real cheap stuff that was two years ago was 150,000 Rand for installation. Now you can get a tier one top quality internationally backed uh, brand product for less than that. So as prices come down, would your advice be to somebody considering a solar system to, you know, continue looking for the bargain out there? Or, you know, is it that if, if we look at the car industry, you know, you've got all these these cheaper type cars coming into the country and um, but there is this one point where you decide okay hang on you have to look at the brand we have to look at the brand value because I don't know this name I don't know this brand um, so I don't want to take a risk with that product but these brands, which are like in, in the major Bucky industries and they, I mean, you know that there are guys that like their, their various brands out there and those brands will always still have a place. But yes, with cars, they keep on getting more expensive. Yeah. And people are brand wise. Yeah, you know, people, brand people are brand loyal. But in the solar industry, it gets cheaper. But I think, like you said, solar panels have, you know, reached the bottoms. Um, lithium price is still coming down. So your advice would be buy, buy quality at a reasonable uh, price bring, rather than buying something cheap. Something into the discussion, I would actually like to input on that as well. Um, a while ago, we, everybody looked at long-term warranties uh, mm. because they want the best quality equipment out there. Mm. And with the price actually being so low currently, um, the price of extending the warranty actually becomes something you can talk about because the the extension on the price warranty, you can actually almost get newer technology in five or six years time yes. and then get an another system which is yeah, so, technology. I so mean, so the my view is changed. my view is on the, on that is it depends on what type of customer you are. So if you are a CNI customer, and this is just my view, um, where you're making a long term investment, I would I would go for for or let's say a PPA provider. I would buy the warranty because you are funding an yeah. asset that's that's selling energy. I agree there. I'd mm -hmm. buy the warranty extensions always because it's a CNI system and it is yes they will get cheaper. But here's where where I'm indifferent on it. If you take a inverter for residential system and a battery three years ago let's say the inverter cost was 50,000 rand and the the battery cost was another 50,000 rand to get and those were like in a five year to get the warranty extension you would have paid like 15 to 20 percent for the warranty extension exactly, that's yeah. 10 grand now that same inverter is 10 grand. That fixed you to yes. one technology. And, and that same inverter is 10 grand now. Yeah. You know, so now do you actually buy, yes, now the warranty extension is going to cost you two, but 
it's going to fix you to that technology. Where I think if you look at the ROI, the moment you get the ROI, because still, I, 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 I always, I always get back to comparing things to cars. Um, you know, the majority of people drive cars for you know that buy that buy them new. They drive them for three, four, five years, and then they replace the car. Yeah. Um, because a newer model comes out, it's got newer features, it's got better... They basically buy the mileage. They, they buy the mileage, correct. Yeah, like yeah. the liberalized cost of energy. For yes. The, you actually pay for the, for the, for the kilowatt hour. Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, if the su system has driven you to work and back for five years, and you, you've you got an... Job, yeah. it's got the, the only difference is, is I, I think on the car you, you lose money. Where this actually, you make money. It pays for itself. It pays for yes. itself. And you can actually get money. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and I think that's one of the, the things that we are talking is, is South Africans need reliability, but they also need features. Um, if you look at, at the Sangro product for argument's sake, Jock, that you, you run, yeah. how far would you say? Mm -hmm. It's come over the last two years only. Well, over over the last two years, uh, we've done a lot in Sangra. <clears throat> so, um, from a basic residential and um, com commercial inverters, um, we we have a, a wider product range. So. I mean, we started on residential six kilowatt inverters. That was the market, and uh, a normal 3.2 kilowatt hour stackable battery. Today, uh, we've got six, eight, 10 kilowatt inverters. We've got three phase hybrid for bigger homes or, or smaller CNI like offices. Uh, we've got new five kilowatt hour batteries, uh, 125. Uh, 50 and a 30 kilowatt hybrid coming in the next year mm. um, and then for your commercial space also uh, a smart energy manager yeah and power stack um, we've got the power stack we we had one power stack and I think even if you just speak about a power titan I mean how <coughs> did power titan change in two years yes yeah I mean it's 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 game changer going from the one to the two to the three I mean Oh uh, yeah, well, I mean, Power Titan 3.0 was just launched at Snake, and yeah. it's the amount of energy density is insane. But now, I mean, and adding the flexibility to it, we we now get to where leaps are happening, and technology is changing. The prices are coming down. It's sort of. It, it's creating this ideal world for somebody looking at solar. Plus now we had this discussion about load shedding, you know, being gone. So we've got, and, and South Africa has never really seen the grid tie residential market, right? No. Um, I mean, grid tie was like a CNI thing. Um, you, uh, there's grid tie systems across the road, there's grid tie systems all around, because businesses are open during the day. I mean, if you look at Australia, Australia had this massive surge in grid tie solar because they were being incentivized to install solar. And now all of a sudden they've got this battery incentive that's come along where they're incentivizing people to add battery because they've got too much solar and they need batteries to store them in. Um, South Africa went with the load shedding thing, so a lot of people have battery backup systems but no solar. Yes. Yes. But now we don't have load shedding, so people can reduce the 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 energy consumption by just doing grid tie solar or you know um, micro inverters or something like that. But this is now for you, Jacques. Yes. Um, I mean, we're talking about Sangro's hybrid and the new battery and the new everything. Can the Inverters that sign that that we sell be installed as a grid tie system only. It can, yes. So, so a customer can buy an inverter and solar panels, reduce his daytime load. You maybe put some um, some of his loads with smart switching and things like that into the daytime to reduce his energy bill. Eat his hot water during the day. Yeah. 
and then just just maybe offset like 50% of his bill for now if he doesn't have the money and then later on add the battery because the batteries am I right is still the highest cost component correct? Yes batteries are still the highest cost component um, panels uh, on, a, on a residential installation I think panels is still your cheapest um, energy source mm -hmm. um, and then second will be the the inverter and then the highest cost components the battery mm -hmm. so he can reduce his load during the day with just an inverter and and a few solar panels uh, heat his geyser run the swimming pool or the heat pump whatever they choose to do and then at a later stage add batteries onto it to store energy for the night so let's go back to you know people thinking that bigger is always better. Um, do we want, guys are thinking that, you know, I've got a 60 amp breaker in my house, I need to install a 16 kilowatt inverter. No, definitely well, not. What does the general South African household's base load looks like? General base load would be between five and 800 watts. So, Peaking. I mean, maybe like two, three, four kilowatts when you've got some geyser gunning on, you maybe hit six, but it's not really, it's not really those kind of, I mean, I'm not talking about large power users, I'm talking about the average South African household. The average, average so, South African household. Am I right in saying six. that a six kilowatt inverter is good for 80% of the people out there? I think so, yes. Just it's comes down to load management. The PV. Yeah, I mean that's that's the other. I mean you can double the PV because uh, I mean everything that we're selling now is DC coupled, yes. which means that double PV size, so that the solar can charge the battery and supply the loads. Yes. Where previous generation technology was limited to the inverter capacity, so it can either do from the solar, from the battery, from the grid, or to the to the load the same. What was so interesting for me listening to the what Jock was saying of the panel pricing that's cheap, mm. um, battery pricing that's expensive, mm. that's all. And yet we st we're still seeing that the designs are mostly wrong. I mm. mean, um, your saving is coming from the PV panel. Yes. There's and no saving coming from the battery. There's no saving coming. So I mean, the battery is just there to store the saving during the day. But people but are adding if you, if you don't massive inverters, no panels, massive batteries, and no panels. Yes. Especially in residential. Yeah. I mean, commercial, that's maybe a, it's well, a different uh, discussion. Okay, so, so what does your roof look like? Mine full of PV panels. Um, Every single facet uh, you've got. I have 46 panels on. Um, yeah basically using all of the... And I, I'm right in saying that your panel to battery sizing is, is way off because you've got small batteries, right? Yeah, so uh, in, in summer times I can generate up to about 100 kilowatts for residential. Um, mm. I use basically all of it. Um, mm. I do also manage my load. And I also do exports, so we export the power as well. Um, but luckily in Cape Town, we can actually get some money back. So that. let's let's talk about let's talk about that because that's something I want to. You mentioned something about managing your loads. Yes. Okay. So I think this is what the next thing is going to be: smart load smart energy management, and load management. Mm 